What's going on guys? We're back again with another super simple paint modification here on the channel. The dinosaur on the chopping block today is the new Massive Biters Albertosaurus. This is a no airbrush required repaint so you guys can do this at home with regular brushes and basic acrylic paints. I'm going to go ahead and get this guy out of the box and we'll get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do is finish up some of that orange striping on the figure here. And uh, this is uh, just a, an orange that I'm using. It's from Testers, and it's one of my favorite oranges because it's a super durable acrylic paint. I love the orange from Testers, but uh, any sort of orange will work. And you don't really have to worry about matching it if you don't want to because you can just paint over the orange stripes that are already on it with the new orange that you're putting on it here. So I'm actually just going through and doing some crazy sort of jungly designs over it, painting some of the scoots and, and, you know, scaling and stuff like that on the back. Nothing fancy, just sort of being creative at this point here. And uh, I painted over the factory orange color since the tester's orange is a bit darker, but I'm creating some sort of skull patterns up here just to kind of make it look a little interesting. And uh, you guys can be creative at this point and do whatever sort of pattern you'd like. Uh, this right here just happens to uh, speak to me when I'm looking at the figure. I kind of like these sort of tribal designs on it. All right, so now I'm going to do real quick Mod Podge coat over all the orange because I want to seal it up because we are going to be washing it later on and I don't want any of the paint to scrape off or anything while I'm scrubbing it with a paper towel. Take that hair dryer and dry that Mod Podge up. That way we can get this thing going. All right, so now I'm going to paint the underside of the belly. This is a basic underside color that I would normally use. And you want to mix a little bit of this white here. This is like an antique white. Mix with a little of this King's Gold. And then you want to get some burnt umber to kind of darken it up, kind of play around with the color. Again, you don't really have to make it match. You can just paint the jaw itself and paint everything the same color. Uh, this is just a close enough match. And... Um, it, it resembles it close enough, but I'm going to wash all this later on, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, but if you guys just wanted to go this far into the repaint without having to, you know, super detail it, this right here would be a, a nice color mix right here. Just kind of play around with the, the shade of it until you get the right tone. Uh, but very simple here. Uh, with the light color, you're going to want to do a couple of coats because you're painting that light over that dark green. It's going to uh, show through underneath it and be a little streaky, so you're going to want to have to thin that paint down and then put a couple coats on it. Now we're going to wash this figure, and I've got a nice um, English ivy green with a little bit of black in it just to darken it up. And I'm going to scrub it down into all of the little details, the little recesses and everything like that. Because this is going to be our shade color underneath. And then once I get that wash put on, I'm going to wipe it all off with a paper towel. And it's going to darken up the skin, which is what I want to go for. I really want a nice dark tone. And I'll do this in sections because I don't want the paint to dry. Um, and you know once it dries then it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get it off So I do the tail first, you know and, and the body the legs and the head all separate sections That way I can get to it while the paint is still wet and then just kind of scraping it off of the high raised areas And leaving all that dark wash down in the recesses Now that that dark shade wash has dried I'm going to go in with the olive green color here And I'm going to highlight all of the raised areas with the dry brush Doing the same thing on the orange now. I'm going to be bringing that orange color back up. I want it to be just a tad bit brighter. So I'm going back over all the orange areas with the original orange paint that I used. And just bringing that color back up and brightening it. Now that the orange is dried, I'm moving on to hand picking out some of the little finer details. Some of the pebbles on the legs and just uh, various little dots here and there just to give it some pattern. I'm going to paint the eyeball yellow with King's Gold, and then I'm going to hold my breath and paint a little tiny black dot in there for the pupil. The claws are going to get hit with some matte black, and I'm going to paint the teeth with an off antique white color. And I'm going to finish things off with a nice sapia wash on the lower jaw and underbelly side to really darken that up and make it look dirty and gritty looking. And then once everything is dried, it'll get a nice little sealing of Mod Podge to lock in all that paint. And this 
custom is done. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. You found the information provided useful and it's helped you out and inspired you. Um, if you want to check out the Sarko Sukis video, that will be at the end of this video. You can click on that. Same type of painting process, super easy, no airbrush required so you guys can achieve really cool looking paint modifications on your figures. Remember for more Jurassic Park related content, you guys know where to find me. Links will be in the description box below. You guys take care and I will see you in the next video.